it's now time to get in the cab and see what it's like to drive. Bigger range is not always better. One of the problems we've had whilst filming this van series is that we've been doing it in 2020, which some of you may be aware has been somewhat affected by COVID-19. And one of the admittedly very, very minor problems uh, relative to, to some of the other issues of this year it's been that I've not had the, the amount of time that I'd wanted to spend in the vans we've been looking at, so I've not been able to take them out you know, for long ranges, really test that range, charge them up, fill them full of stuff and see how that affects their, their sort of handling and, their, and their, their, their effectiveness. Fortunately, however, we've had the chance to speak to people who have. They've been using these vans, electric vans of all sorts, day in, day out for weeks, months and even years. And today I'm here at SolarSense to speak to their MD, Stephen Barrett, about their use of electric vans. So what does SolarSense actually do to start us off? We install renewable energy systems, mainly solar PV, solar hot water, heat pumps and batteries now. So could you give me some examples of some of the projects that SolarSense have undertaken? Well, our most famous one was, was Glastonbury Festival, Worthy Farm. And that was the first large scale barn done in the UK. So that really put us on a map to a larger scale. Before that, we were domestic installers. I know one of the, one of the issues that people have, have had with solar is, is the aesthetics of it. You know, they don't want to ruin their, their house or their office, whatever it is, by putting these big panels on. But you mentioned you did a church recently, which, is, which was quite interesting. Uh, yeah, we just done the Methodist church at Pilton, and that's solar slate, so that's a complete roof. That's just, you cannot tell the difference in that case. Obviously, that costs quite a lot more. But even generally, you know, panels are, can be completely black now, they, they blend in. It's not like some of these blue panels you, you, you see that were done seven, eight years ago. We're doing, obviously, batteries is, is going in with, with solar now. Because that gets over the issues of you've only got power when the sun's out. By storing it in batteries, it's, it's night and day. You're not giving it away in a day to have it back in the night. You've been using electric vans to deliver some of your products. Yeah, for seven years now. We've had the Renault Kango. Just locally, it's, its range is limited to 60 miles because it's, it's one of the early ones. But it's been very handy to go into Bristol, just down to Western in our region here. So am I right in saying the Renault Kango was the first commercially available electric van? It was the first one. Yeah, which makes you a very, very early adopter. Yeah, obviously it's, it's linked to what we do. We wanted to be the first to show that electric cars is the way forward those first vans were not as effective as the, the vans in the market today. But was that 60 mile range still enough for you to do your, your business day in day out? It was, yeah. Yeah, we had a couple of occasions when an electrician would have, have to charge it in someone's house because a lot of our customers were keen anyway and didn't mind him doing that. But he, we even gave him a meter so he could say how much he spent. It's usually like 50p or something. Nobody actually asked for the money. Yeah. <laughs> This is the Vauxhall Bavaro E, and it's quite a commitment from Vauxhall, I think, into the electric van market, because unlike a lot of companies, they've, they've fully immersed themselves in this and producing 14 distinct models. There's this, which is the, uh, the cargo van, the sort of typical panel van you'd, you'd assume you'd get, three seats in the front and a load of space in the back. The next model then is similar to this, except it's the crew cab version, so you've got the three seats in the front and then three seats behind that and a bit less space in the back. The third model then is the flatbed with two seats in the front, as you'd need for a driver and passenger. And then, as the name suggests, it's a flatbed. There's no panels on the side or on the roof. All three of those models come in two different body lengths, either long or, or short wheelbase. And then of those six models, you can either get 50 kilowatt hour battery or a 75 kilowatt hour battery, bringing your total to 12. And the astute amongst you who are paying attention will note that I said 14 at the start. And that's because they're also producing two people carriers. One is your economy class nine seater and one is your more luxurious business class eight seater, bringing your total models to uh, 14. So let's go to the back of the cargo van and take a bit more of a closer look at the dimensions inside. Before I talk about dimensions and payloads, I just want to show you this. 
electric side doors on both sides actually which is really handy and you can even have an optional extra where you can do the old uh, foot swing thing under there and it'll open it'll open without um, to use your hands which is handy if you're obviously carrying stuff so double doors at the back what I should mention first off is that although there's not a tow bar on this particular uh, version we've got here today you can get a tow bar for it because this comes with a 100 kilogram a metric ton uh, towing capacity which is super handy and actually rare at the moment in electric vans um, and I immediately thought of that people carrier version you know doing shuttle runs from say Heathrow Airport nine people in the back and then a small trailer with all the luggage on it would be perfect for that like all the medium and large vans on the market these days whether electric or not the width of the Varo will accept a Euro pallet, which has become the kind of minimum standard really, because anybody I think who's going to produce a van, a commercial van, be it electric or not, that can't take at least a Euro pallet width is, uh, is not going to sell many. Payload wise, you're actually better here with the smaller battery, because obviously more battery means more weight the vehicle's got to carry. So the 50 kilowatt hour battery will have a maximum payload of 1,226 kilos, Whereas if you go for the 75 kilowatt hour battery, your maximum payload is going to be about a, a metric ton. So you lose a little bit of maximum carrying capacity as far as weight goes, but gaining in that extra range and power. We have four charge points. We have sales cars as well, electric. And it's, it's, it's charged from the solar roof and we have solar panels in the field as well. So it's 90% from our own solar power, so it's free charging here. Clearly it's, it's linked. If, if you're going to go to an electric vehicle fleet, you look at putting solar panels on your roof to power it. And obviously it's powering your office as well. Have you had any, any issues with, with running an electric vehicle for the last seven years rather than a combustion engine vehicle? Uh, no, it's never gone wrong. We've never had issues. Just had its standard service. It's mainly because it was an early one. It's the mile that range isn't, isn't enough to go much further. You know, if you're going to Bath and beyond, so it's the new, you know, we're very interested in the new vans where you're getting over a hundred mile range. That, that's, that's what we need in our business. So you've got a middle seat here, so there's three in the front. So if you want, you can get three in the back and you can make it either three option or a six option seat. And actually what I should say is that that middle seat that Noel really likes sitting in, in this, it's got one of the best leg rooms I've seen in a three seater uh, van. So that's quite impressive. You've got three driving power modes. The, the top level is, is power which is about, it gives you 100 kilowatts, which is the equivalent of about 136 brake horsepower. In the middle, you've got no, the normal setting, which is 80 kilowatts, which is about 107 brake horsepower. And then there's the eco mode, which is 60 kilowatts, which is about 80 brake horsepower. Now clearly, as you, as you lose power, what you're gaining is range. So it's a, it's a, it's a way up of, of losing a bit of power to get a bit of range. And at the top power setting, the, the one that's actually called power, uh, the maximum speed you'll get out of the van is, a, is 81 miles an hour, which is, should be absolutely fine because it's, that's faster than the legal limit, certainly here in the UK. The fact you're charging is mostly from, from solar, your actual sort of running costs are next to zero. Yeah, we've gone down from normally about two and a half thousand pounds to run a van like that to a couple of hundred. Just some of that winter power we get from, from the mains. So you're looking to get like a new electric van soon? Yeah, very interested in the Vauxhall or the, the, the Nissan. Looking at that sort of the larger size van yeah. would be ideal for us. And we, we realise there hasn't been one out, but there are now. The van, like its combustion engine counterpart, is a front wheel drive. And that's all powered by the batteries underneath the floor that run the full length of the van. Now, to give you an idea of how much range you'll get for the two different battery options, the maximum range you'll get, which would be the 75 kilowatt hour battery, driving it say 30 miles an hour, you can, apparently, claimed by Vauxhall, get 226 miles, which is pretty impressive for a commercial van, I've got to say. And actually there's a, a, a page on Vauxhall's website with a little calculator and you can input into that the sort of loads you might be carrying, uh, the sort of speeds you might be doing, and even the weather, well, the, the temperature, and that will estimate your ranges.
Now, there are a number of ways to charge this vehicle, both AC and DC. The best way to charge it, it's what most people call rapid charging. Vox will actually call it fast charging. I'm not that bothered about the semantics of what you want to call it. The important thing is it can charge at up to 100 kilowatts, which means you can charge the 50 kilowatt hour battery in half an hour from zero to 80%, and the 75 kilowatt hour battery, unsurprisingly, will charge from zero to 80% in 45 minutes, which is pretty impressive if you're doing long journeys, because actually you probably want to stop after a few hours to have a quick brew and charge the van back up. Now, the other end of the scale, you can, if you really, really want to, really have to, plug the van into a domestic plug, so a three-pin socket here in the UK or, or a two-pin socket um, if you're in Europe or America, but it takes a long time to charge up. The 50 kilowatt hour battery will take about 28 hours to charge and the 75 kilowatt hour battery will take 42 hours to charge. A much better option is to have a wall box at your place of work, the office or, or at home to charge it much faster than it would do from a, a domestic plug. Here in the UK, we've got phase one and you can charge about seven kilowatts um, into the vehicle, which will charge the, the smaller and the bigger batteries in about seven and a half hours and 11 hours 20 respectively. So that'll charge easily overnight. However, if you've got the option to have three phase, maybe commercially here in the UK or, or, or in Europe, you can charge up to 11 kilowatts, which means the small and big batteries will charge in four hours 45 or about seven and a bit hours respectively there too. So a much better option than plugging it in to a domestic plug. What's quite cool is that it's got a heads up display. It's a bit like um, flying an X-Wing fighter. It'll show you things like your speed, energy consumption. As well as that, it will show you what speed you should be doing. So it'll show you the, um, the speed limit for the set of roads you're, you're on. Now, GPS systems can do that as well. But you might get a stretch of road where there's a temporary uh, speed limit on. This heads-up display can actually read signs. It can read road signs, um, which I think, frankly, is wizardry. The rest of the display gets a lot of information. The LCD screen's really bright, colourful. They're really easy to read. It gives you the usual information you'd expect from a vehicle, but there's a lot more than that. Uh, one of the features that I quite like is that it will give you the energy consumption of the sort of cab conditioning system, i.e. the heater or the air conditioning. Now, I like that because it may be that you are, you know, you get to the end of your range and you can look at how much of that energy you're using to heat the cab up or cool it down and decide to stick your hat on, your jacket on, turn the heater down and gain a few more miles. There's an alarm for the blind spot. Personally, I'd prefer an extra little bit of a mirror so there wasn't a blind spot. And even the alarm isn't as good as some of the vehicles I've driven. The alarm won't signal to the car's pretty close, if not at your back end. I'd like a little bit more warning than that. Price-wise, the, the most basic, cheapest version of the van you can pick up for excluding VAT and with the current government grants for about 27 grand, which isn't that bad. I like the Varro. I think of all the vans we've looked at so far, it's been my favourite. I like the fact that there's a lot of choice in the, in the models you can get, and actually some of the high-tech features that I've not really seen in some of the other vans. And I'm not the only one. There's some big companies investing in the Vivaro. BT have got 270 of them, and, and uh, British Gas have ordered 1,000. So we're going to start seeing a lot more Vivaros on the road as of now. Perhaps as the Renault Kangoo was in the early days, it was the kind of front runner in electric vans, certainly in the small van field. Now, in the electric vans, and certainly in the medium van field, the Vivaro, for me, and I think for a lot of other people, is going to be the front runner. So I'd just like to thank SolarSense for hosting us today. And on the next episode, which will be our last episode of the Fully Charged Van series, I'll be having a chat with Robert and going through all the things I've learnt on my van journey so far. And we're taking one last look at a van, and that'll be the Renault Zoe. Great stuff, Andy. Well done. Now, I've really learnt a lot from watching all this stuff, and it's very, very exciting. And there's a lot of other vans are coming, aren't yeah, they? In the, yeah. in, in I mean, the, I'm hoping in the pipeline. Two. We'll be able to do Series 2 of the vans. <laughs> but anyway, as always, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the Patreon link that's beneath this video and YouTube memberships and all that stuff. Do support what we're struggling away to do during these difficult times. We're very grateful for the support we get from our wonderful wonderful loyal and gorgeous audience do tell your mates about fully charged and uh, there's lots more coming and uh, i don't know that's it really as always if you have been 
Thank you for watching. We are going small. The smallest van we've come so far. It's about buying the best van for you.